people, the concept of faith is kind of nebulous and sometimes hard to grab. Well, I want to add some concrete to it based on the first verse of Hebrews 11. <laughs> faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith has content to it. It's not vague. The issue of faith has to do with the object that you're trusting in, not so much the amount of faith that you have. And the way you know that you are operating by faith is by the movement of your feet. In other words, faith is reflected in motion, in action. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. It's acting like it is so, even when it's not so, in order that it might be so, simply because God said so. And the way you concretize faith, the way you know it's real, is don't look at your feelings first because they change all the time. Look at your feet first. How am I moving? Am I operating in obedience to God? When you look at the hall of faith, you'll find a person, you'll find what they did, and then you'll see what God did based on what they did. So you'll see the movement of God in response to faith because faith is a critical mechanism to experience and see the supernatural enter into the realm of the natural. So faith is substantive, but it deals with what you do not see yet. Once you exchange and put sight before faith, it's no longer faith because you have sight. Faith is anticipating what you're looking forward to, what your expectations are. The biblical word for that is hope. And when you and I learn to expect from God and move in sync with God through obedience to God, which is faith, then we get to see more of God in our everyday life circumstances. Faith does not force God to do what God never planned to do, but what faith does is access what God has already planned to do when he sees we're trusting in him to do it. So I hope that helped us a little bit. So I'm going to share a devotional message. I'm, I promise I'll get you out of here by 11, 11.30 at the latest. Just about 15 minutes here. I want to talk quickly about having faith in the prayer meeting. It's possible to be in church, it's possible to be the presence of God, and maybe some individuals may doubt God even while you're very in the very presence of Almighty God. If you were with us last Wednesday, we talked about how Mary and Joseph had to receive from the Lord by faith that this new thing, this baby that would be born of a virgin, although it was different and new, to accept the Lord's plan and just obey what God had for the saving of many souls. And so here's a little definition of faith. Faith is obedience to God without the details. Or Philip Yancey said it like this. Faith means trusting God in advance what will only make sense in reverse. Let me say that again. Faith means taking God at his word, trusting in advance what will only make sense in reverse. So if you're new with us watching online, you know right now we are walking by faith as a congregation. We just took missions, faith promise. You say, well, how is it all going to work financially? How is God going to bless me? How can I do more for the Lord? But this is what God's put in my heart. And it's not about feelings or emotions. It's just this is what God said. And I'm going to exercise faith. And then you'll see the results. We exercise faith, obviously. And by the way, we're doing it on a lot of levels. But Valesburg in 2021... We exercise faith, God, we don't know how it's all going to work. There's feelings, there's emotions, but it's just kind of moving forward. Only after you move forward, you look back and you say, wow, look at God's faithfulness. And then, obviously, you know, we're building an expansion in COVID. You say, well, what's going to the world or what's the sanctuary? What's the congregation going to look like moving forward? I'm not sure all the details. All I know is we'll walk by faith and listen to the Lord. God will take care of us. But he wants us to walk by faith, especially tonight in the prayer meeting. Faith in the prayer meeting. So we're going to look at another biblical story about the, not just the birth of Jesus, but the birth of what some people say his cousin, John the Baptist. We know they're related. Here, this is Luke 2. 
Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for burning incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. There's a prayer meeting. This is what God's doing. It's a united prayer meeting. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to call him John. We know he'd be called John the Baptist. He will be a joy and delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink and he would be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born. It was the Nazarite vow. If you know the Old Testament, he's set apart for God. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and to the disobedient to the wisdom of righteous to make a ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, and this is where doubt comes in, watch this. How can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. He's very polite. He says, I'm old. Don't ask my wife her age, but she's old too. And she's just well along in years. But do you see what he starts to do? He's trying to figure it out. How is this all gonna work? The angel said to him, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until this day happens because you did not believe my words which came true at their appointed time. Zechariah was not gonna be able to speak for nine months because he did not believe. Only believe, only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. But you say, well, how, Gabriel? How's this going to work? I'm older. I can't probably have a baby. I know there's medical science and all this stuff. My wife probably can't have a baby. How are we going to have a child? All these great things take place. And because they doubted, it shut their mouth. I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, me and you, when we doubt God, it shuts our mouth. What this community is looking for are people that believe in God and God has the answer. When we believe the gospel, when we trust and we just take God at his word, now we have a voice. We're walking by faith. It's the activity of God with us and God begins to do a great work when we worship, we thank him, we apply his word to our life and if we don't, we lose on the opportunity to share our faith. And so God is asking us to hear what he's saying to us. And by the way, he's speaking to everybody in this room. The question is, will you take what he says by faith beyond your feelings or how it will all work out and will you obey the Lord? It's, it's about obedience to the Lord and see what he will do. If you don't, you'll probably kind of not have the opportunity to be in, an, in the middle of all that God would want to do in your heart and your life. But it does start with salvation. Listen to this about living by the Spirit. The Apostle Paul says, I've been crucified with flesh. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. When you give your life to Jesus, you go away from the flesh, you walk by the Spirit, and you walk by faith. God's called us to walk by faith and not by sight. By nature, we're trusting God more than we're trusting the words around us. It could even happen in a prayer meeting. Zachariah was in prayer. He was worshiping. There was an angel. And in the middle of all the spiritual activity, he didn't believe. You could come to church Sunday morning, Wednesday night. You could help stack chairs. You could even go to a small group. You could serve. And when God's spirit comes upon you, says, will you obey me in this area of your life? You can actually doubt God. I believe God is calling us to obey him and walk by faith. That's the foundation 
of our lives. Walking by faith, trusting God more than we trust ourselves. Now, I do want to give you an updated picture we have of our, our building. It's exciting times. Thank God for, uh, go ahead and put that up real quick. There it is. So if you look in the top left-hand corner, you see the gentleman working. 60% of the foundation has been poured. We thank God for a very mild December. Whether you knew it or not, we were praying, oh Lord, it has to be above freezing. You can't pour concrete when it's freezing and frosting. Have you noticed it's warm? It's been warm. I think it's going to be 60 tomorrow. Is that right? 60. It's amazing. And they're going to finish pouring. I think inspections come again on Friday, Friday afternoon. If everything goes well, if not Monday, they'll finish pouring the foundation. You say, why is foundation so important? Because everything builds on the foundation up. So whether you see it or not, the foundation is getting laid as part of our new sanctuary. And you better hope and pray one day that that foundation is strong enough. Maybe Will gets the Holy Ghost going under him. The bass, maybe the sound guy gets a little going. And all of a sudden the walls start rattling. You know what will happen is who laid the foundation? So our salvation, the foundation is on Jesus Christ and we put our faith in Christ and his words and that's what moves us forward and stabilizes us in uncertain words. There's a Christian influencer, he's a preacher, his name is Craig Groeschel and he has what's called daily declarations. I don't know if you know them but basically he's standing on the promises of God. I'll give you a couple that he says and he encourages people to kind of write them out and apply to his life. They're not all of them but here's some of them. This is what he says to himself every day. It's just, it's not like the things of the world. They're just, this is what God wants me to be involved in in my life. First, Jesus is first in my life. I exist to serve and glorify him. He says this every day. I love my wife and I lay down my life to serve her. My children will love God and serve him with their whole hearts. I will nurture, equip, train, and empower them to do more for his kingdom than they can imagine. I love people and believe the best about people. I am disciplined. Christ in me is stronger than the world desires in me. I'm growing closer to Jesus every day. Because of Christ, my family is closer, my body is stronger, my faith is deeper, and my leadership is stronger, sharper. My words, thoughts, and imaginations are under the power of Christ. I take all thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. Finally, pain is my friend. I rejoice in suffering because Christ suffered for me. It's amazing what will happen to you if you will listen to God's word, think about it, meditate it, and apply it. And you have to keep saying it to yourself, saying it to yourself, because the words that are coming all around us are fear, doubt, concern, doomsday, government, you got all this stuff happening. And what we need to do is listen to God's voice by faith because God's moving. So he just doesn't save you. He has a plan for your life. For we are created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared for us in advance. So where's God? He's on the move. He's, so you know what? I've actually created my own cards. I put this in my devotional journal. That's how I do. I put, whatever time I wake up, I put it in the top right-hand corner with the date. I pray through the Lord's Prayer, the disciples' prayer. That's my guide. Try to be led by the Spirit. I do the daily Bible reading plan with the church. But there's been a couple things in this COVID season and especially in 2021, that's jumped out at me. And I said, Satan or my flesh, you can't win. I need to listen to the truth. Because you say, well, I'm the pastor. I should have no problems. That's just not true. If anything, maybe I get attacked more. All I know is pastors are discouraged too. So we all have to walk by faith to God's word. So this is mine. This is Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid, do not get discouraged. But Lord, sometimes I do get discouraged, sometimes I get afraid. He goes, are you gonna listen to me or not? The Lord himself goes before you, and you know, I'm like, yeah, you know what, the Lord's right. He's not gonna let me down, he's gonna go before us, he's gonna take care of us. You might not think about, oh Lord, let there be a decent December. The Lord says, I got you. If you'll listen to his voice, you'll have victory. So that's the first one. There's another one of God's perfect timing. Here it is, Ecclesiastes 3.1. There's a time for everything, a season for every I can't even, activity under the heavens. 
I'm impatient too. Sometimes I want to get out ahead. Anybody else want to want things now? I'll be honest with you. I like Chick-fil-A. Anybody else like Chick-fil-A? It is God's kitchen. I mean, there is something about it. I mean, there used to be a Burger King here in town. I don't know if you guys remember. There used to be a Burger King. One time we went through there. We said, can we have a burger? They said, we're out of burgers. That's what you do. Then we said, all right, we'll just have, we'll just have fries. We're out of fries. We said, okay, we'll have some ice cream. We're out of ice cream. I'm like, do you have anything? Like, do you have? But Chick-fil-A, you go right through it. And then in Chick-fil-A, at least in Marlton, but most Chick-fil-A's now have like a double, so you can have a double thing go around, don't you? And then if, it, if that's busy, they'll have people out there with like little clipboards and they'll take your thing before you get there. Even with all those modern conveniences, sometimes I'll say to myself, hurry up. I don't like to wait. I want everything now. I'm sure you do too. But God says everything happens in his perfect timing. What he's teaching me in 2021, it's his perfect timing. I don't know what God's saying to you, but if you wrestle with your emotions and your feelings, you might want to write down some scriptures that can help you to be stronger in your life. Here's another one, Philippians 4.19. I'll provide all your needs. Listen, I got major commitments. I tithe. I give to missions. I have a third daughter who wants to go to college. I have all these different thoughts that go through my head. Lord, how are we going to figure all this out? I have the concerns of the finances of this church and Valesburg. And I hear the Lord's voice. I will provide all your needs. And I go like, well, yeah, but Lord, we have these bills to pay. And don't forget about, I'm reminding the Lord. I'm, I'm re hey, Lord. And what does the Lord just say? I'll provide all your needs. So almost every morning, I go through these. There's a couple more for the church. I'll build my church physically and spiritually. The world's changing. Congregations are changing. Um, I'll provide all that you need. And he said, listen, if you'll do the right, if you'll, John, if you'll do the right thing, people will go with you. Don't be discouraged. Just keep moving forward. Sometimes you almost have to encourage yourself in the Lord. Say, okay, Lord, by faith, I'm going to move forward in Jesus' name. And sometimes it's simply to say, I'm going to throw my net on the other side of the boat, Lord, because you say so. Now that's the preacher talking. You could be in the prayer meeting. There's worship. There's an altar. There's trees. And I do think it's symbolic. You see the top of the tree right there? It's bending over. While, while Will was leading worship, it was, we fall down. It was leaning that way in the presence of the Lord. You could be in the presence of the Lord and still miss what God is saying to you. Now with that being said, there is grace. We all mess up. It's not easy to live by faith. Sometimes we're feeling our way through, but when we surrender to the Lord, God comes back around and he leads us through. And that's exactly what happened with Zechariah. Watch this. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like the name to the, the child. He asked them for a writing tablet and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. This is the first game of Pictionary. Does anyone play Pictionary? You kind of write it out, you try to guess it, that's what's happening. Immediately his mouth was open, his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. All the neighbors were filled with awe throughout the hill country of Judea. People were talking about these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, asking, what then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was upon him. Do you see God's grace came in a moment of faith? Zachariah didn't trust God, but God's grace swings back around. Listen, if you'll trust me, you're going to see me work in ways you never thought. People will worship me, the awe of God, the presence of God, and that's what our community needs. It just needs the Lord. There's people in your life that just need the Lord. Invite them to church. When we walk by faith, God may be speaking to you. Go around and share your faith. Tell people to come to church. Exercise faith and see what God does. But even in a prayer meeting, say, no, it's not for me. You squash faith. And then all of a sudden your mouth becomes muted. You're not used by God. God's not using you in a special way. And God wants to do something wonderful when you exercise faith. Now faith is a confidence of what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. Watch this. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. So that what is seen was not made out as what is visible. Now watch this. 
This is how faith begins. It begins with worship. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. Abel, Jesus, the the ancients, they call us to worship the Lord. If God's real, worship him. Don't let your mouth get quiet. Lift up your voice and worship. Say, God, I don't know everything, but I know I know you. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I love you. I trust you. You will take care of me. You will meet all my needs, and I want to be about your business. I worship you, and I praise you. God has called this church right now to worship to be thankful, to give. We are not to talk overly about government or the economy or our mask or whatever. He wants you to lift up your voice. You say, I come to church and I sit there like this. You say, and a lot of men struggle with this. Yeah, no, it's for women and children. Man, you lead the way. If you're a man of faith, you lift up your voice to God and say, God, I love you and I'm gonna trust you no matter what because it's your job to kind of lead the way. So no matter what, if I'm not feeling it or whatever, I'm on the front row, Will should feel from me that this service is gonna be okay. He should feel it because we are here to worship the Lord. It's not about me and my new plaid shirt. And somehow we are matching Damien and Vet. Somehow we got on the message, God worked through it. See, you're always on the right thing. He said, why are we here? To worship the Lord. I'm not prophesying. But you know we put time, effort, and money into this room. I believe this room is still going to be a place of worship, even when we go back into the new sanctuary. We're setting this up by faith. Something good is going to be in this room past when we're out of here. So, yeah, we're kind of gearing up for the new sanctuary, however long that takes, wherever we get that all done, praise the Lord. But I walked around in, by faith and said, Lord, yeah, the main body of the church may be over there, but this, now we have this whole room ready. Now, I know some of the staff and the maintenance are like, oh, pastor, listen, we only have 80 more times to set this up. But God has called us to worship him. That's the first step of faith. I believe in God. I believe he's the created one. I will worship him. We're not trying just to get the place rocking and we got everybody singing like this, a hype machine. No, from the belly, from your heart, you worship the Lord because God is true. He's your savior. He's your God. And you'll be with him forever in heaven. That's what we're going to do. It's not boring. It's what we're created to do is to worship him. But it doesn't just start with worship. Some people like, oh, Sunday I go to worship, a house of worship. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, it goes on to say that we must walk this thing out to faith. Like Tony Evans said, it's it's your feet. Watch. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life, so he did not exercise death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Watch this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let me say that again. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I'm standing before you as your pastor saying, I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. But God says, be like Enoch. Walk with me. Don't run. Don't be like uh, Abraham and Sarah. They got out ahead. They had a baby on their own. Massive consequence. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. I'll show you. Our tendency is to run ahead and kind of try to conquer it or to stop. It does concern me a little bit that some Christians have stopped coming to church. Because what happens is if Satan can get you to stop, then he can get anything come else in. So we need to keep walking with the Lord. You say, well, I don't feel like walking. That's not the point. Americans love their feelings, but we got to get out of our feelings and just keep walking with the Lord because the Lord's faithful. He says he'll reward us and we'll walk with him. He will bless us. He will help us. He'll be faithful. I don't know how it'll work, but he has a way of working it out. Doesn't he work all things out for the good of those who love him? And maybe you didn't feel like coming today, but you're glad you did. And like, hey, you know what? This is good. Oftentimes we don't, I have these feelings when I go to the gym. I can't remember ever going to the gym like, I can't wait to get there. I'm like, this is the longest drive. I don't want to go there. But there is a sense that when you get done, you're glad that you did it. And he walks with me. And he talks with me along the journey. The second step to being a person of faith is walking with the Lord. 
in a minute, I'm going to invite you to walk up to the front. You say, why? Because if you don't move your feet, you're just sitting there. If you don't open your mouth, you're just sitting there. I'm not trying to get you to sing in a choir. I'm just saying, when you believe the Lord, you exercise faith. Teach your kids to put like money in that thing. Why? Because it's faith. Go on an inner city trip. Go on a missions trip. Invite your neighbors. Whatever. Exercise faith. Even if the whole church stinks, you exercise faith. It's good for you. And he will reward you. Finally, we also have to work. A lot of people talk, but they don't work. We work for the Lord. Watch this. By faith, Noah when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he was commending the world and becoming heir of righteousness. That is keeping with faith. So God told Noah what to do. At that time, there was no rain. God says to Noah, I'm going to tell you to do something that's crazy. Build an ark. I'll give you all the infrastructure, this is how it's going to look. If you ever read the Bible, he built it perfect. I think down in Kentucky, you can go down there and look at the whole ark. It's real. God told him everything, but there was never rain. So could you, and by the way, I have a drill gun, like a DeWalt. Could you imagine, men and ladies, having to hammer all that stuff together? No compressor, no power tools, just hammering it for years Did he ever have a doubt that maybe God might not come through? But as soon as he saw it rain, he probably said, thank you, Lord. And God said, get in the boat. And could you imagine looking over and all these people trying to get in the boat? And at that moment, it paid off. This church, if we'll walk by faith, it may seem a little crazy at the moment. But when we go into the new sanctuary, we're all going to be, thank you, Lord. But we have to walk this thing out. And in just a couple minutes, not only are you going to walk up to the altar, the lights are going to come on, and now you're going to work, and you're going to put some chairs. You know what been one of the better things for our church is we have actually come together, and we've worked. There's a camaraderie that we have. Roger back there, sweating. <gasps> and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm just kind of like stereotyping The guys in our church, and I know ladies too, but the guys have kind of just said, hey, this is what we have to do. We have to go work to make this thing happen. Why? Because we're walking by faith. I actually think coming in the sanctuary, considering all that we know, has not been a bad thing for us. It's actually been pretty good. But it is work. And there is faith. And there's challenging days. But if we'll look to Jesus, we'll have great results. And you say, why all this stuff is for souls? It's for souls. John the Baptist was born. He came. He was to lead the way. Why? Because Jesus, he would be the pronouncer. He'd get, hey, get yourself ready. Prepare yourself. Uh, repent of your sins. Do these baptisms. Why? Because it's kind of purging your soul. Get ready for Jesus. And he would be the one that would set people free. In some way, we're all like John the Baptist. When we set up chairs, we get everything ready, the trees. Why are we doing that? We're like John the Baptist. We're getting ready for souls. Why are we here tonight? To pray for Reggie Dabbs. Why? For souls. Steve Fry, in the, right before church, and you, you, Brendan, you can kind of play some music. Make it seem like it's a real anointed time. I'm Pastor John's landing this plane. Man, that was a great sermon. What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just stacking chairs. I was kind of just like joking with Steve Fry in the back. I said, just kind of like talking like, I hope we're doing the right thing here. Because sometimes when you walk by faith, in the middle of the storm, you're wondering if God's going to get you through. And just, he probably didn't know it. He actually blessed me. He goes, you know what? If one soul comes to the Lord during this time of setting up and breaking down chairs, it's been worth it. Kind of encouraged me. Steve, do you have any other words for everybody else? Maybe you could come up here with a a word. Do you have your cards? You got your cards? You can show us your cards. But that's what this is all about. Jesus was born of a virgin. Why? So he'd be the savior of the world. John the Baptist came He was the forerunner. He was the Isaiah prophesied about to go before, prepare the way, make every rough road smooth. Why do we do what we do? We're walking by faith because we know this is not about us. This is about Jesus. And we're now working for the Lord for a great harvest.
and we're right in the middle of it. And you, some of you are watching, you're saying like, Pastor, my feelings are shot. My emotions are shot. Maybe I'm down, discouraged. Maybe my, I had to fold my business or things aren't going my way, but I believe God's real. And God's called you to live by faith. I can't figure anything out. And I know I kind of say it, but we're walking, we're worshiping, and we're just gonna keep trust, and we're gonna work for the Lord, and we're just gonna believe that we're building on a firm foundation, and he will take care of us moving forward in Jesus' name. That's what we offer the world, a life of faith and obedience and worship and thanksgiving, and no matter what happens in this world. And here's the reality. Our forefathers in the assemblies of God, oftentimes when they would get to church, they would sing not about this world. They would sing about going to heaven. This world is not fair. It's not just. It's not equal. It won't be right. Some of the stuff that you deal with individually or happens all around you is not right. See, my boss isn't right. He favored to, this isn't right. It, it, it's not right. It won't be right. I, I, but there will be a day when we get to heaven, it will be right. And that's our song. We're just kind of, the old timers would say, we're just kind of passing through. If we're just trying to make this right, everything good, and live your best life now, no, no, no. We're walking by faith, not by sight. And Pastor Jamel said, we're, we're struggling. We're fighting with different weapons. We're not fighting like everybody else. That's the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who lives for God, he lives forever. And we'll be with the Lord. It's with the Lord, so this is temporary. We're walking by faith. We gotta train our kids. Our, our kids are the center of the universe. No, they're not. Look at your kids and say, listen, that's just life. I love you, but if you think the world, like one little thing happens to them on TikTok, the whole world falls apart. I mean, come on, this is, come on. Everybody has to do this. We all have to get up and go to work and gotta kind of fight through it to be a mature adult, but the whole world revolves around our kid. No, it revolves around God. It's not about kids, it's not about ourself. I feel like Americans, we're real selfish. We're just selfish. We're all into ourselves. What God wants us to do is get off of ourselves and our little bubble and lift, lift our hands to God and worship God. He's the center of it all. And then he starts putting the pieces because we walk by faith. And I think he's calling us. But you could be in a prayer meeting and God would speak to you and you're like Zachariah and you could still miss it. God's got a calling on your life. He has stuff for you to do. He has souls for you to win, to invite to church. Don't be like Zechariah, who's like had unbelief in his heart. And then all of a sudden, his ministry or his life goes like this. Or say, Lord, would you just let me speak to me, Lord, and whatever you tell me to do, I'll do with all of my heart, and I'll let the chips fall where they may, and see what God does. I'm telling you, God is on the move. He's working. And we just got to keep putting our faith and our trust in him. Amen? I don't know how it all is going to go. I don't know exactly how it's going to work out for my kids. People ask me, like, am I going to have grandkids? Not yet, but I don't know how it's going to work out for them. I do know the world is changing. Our world is changing. It seems like it's upside down. America is kind of whacked out. But God is doing something else. And he always responds to people by faith. So worship him. Walk with him. Work for him with all of your heart and see what God does. Let your kids catch you in the act of worshiping God and walking with him and serving him and let it be a joy to your heart. It's all about God. You know, you know, my daughter kind of was working the concessions and dad, don't, tell, don't let, forget to tell him that we have pretzels. So everybody after church is like tripping one another to go get pretzels. Don't forget the pretzels are about Jesus. Don't forget the, the chairs are about Jesus. The tree, don't forget it's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus, souls, eternal life for the kingdom of God. Would you stand with me in the Lord's presence? What time is it? 7.56, I went a little long. That was like a 15 minute devotional. And I added 20 minutes to it, I'm sorry. Just so you know, we have one more Wednesday night and then it's the Marlton Christian Academy elementary program on the 22nd. Pastor Jamel said, well, Christmas Eve, three and five o'clock, we're ready to go. But I really believe in my heart that God is calling us to live 
by faith. Trust him. Trust his word. Whatever God says, just do what God tells us to do. As far as I'm concerned, the best of my knowledge, me, the staff, pastors, exec team, Pastor George, the deacons, to the best of my ability, we're all in healthy communication, relationship, unity. And we're just taking it step by step and walking this thing out. We're already starting to prepare for the week of prayer, the first full week of January, the Daniel fast. And beyond that, we just kind of don't know, but we do know if we'll pray and we'll set the tone for the rest of the year. God will take care of us. One of our deacons said, you know, the last two years we've been praying and fasting for the 21 days leading, and God miraculously provided for the rest of the year. It's like we eat for the, we kind of like prepare and we eat off of that for the rest of the year. Lord, we're just positioning ourselves for you to do a great work. And we need the Lord. We need the Lord. We so desperately need the Lord. You need the Lord. I'm not a beggar or a borrower, but I do feel like we need to worship. I do feel like you need to move your feet with your faith. You say, well, I believe. The Bible says even the demons believe. That's weak. That's weak. You don't know, I believe. No, you exercise faith. You move your feet. Come to an altar and then work. Work as unto the Lord. Don't lie, steal, kill people. Say, Lord, for you. God can do a work. He's doing a work. He's faithful. He's good. The church, the people, we walk by faith and not by sight. So maybe we could sing that song, Don't You Tell Me He Can't Do It, right? Will and I wrote that a couple weeks ago together. It's been really kicking around different elevation. Now everyone's been taking it. Maverick City has really taken off with it. But Will and I, we did that. We did that together. We should have got the copyright. But anyway, I'm just joking, Will. We didn't do that. Someone will come up to me after church saying, you shouldn't joke around like that. That's lying. I'm joking. I'm joking. (laughs) You're not going to feel everything between now and New Year's. Some of us, it's going to be hard. It's going to be cold. It's going to get dark. Not every feeling is going to go your way or my way. So what you do is you declare the truth. You hang in the truth. You know you move forward with what's right and let God be God and we trust him. He'll work it all out. So let's sing that song. But I, I, I want to invite you to worship. Now listen, if you feel like you can't or whatever, that's fine. Stay in your seat. But I, to me, what I do is, I don't know why, I go deep in the altar. I, I go deep. I go there. I go all the way to the black wall. I use all the spaces. I just want to be close to the Lord. I want my feet to be in action. I want to invite you to come, worship the Lord, sing loud, sing clear. And then, and then, we, then we will close it down and then we'll work a little bit. But say, Lord, by faith, we move forward in Jesus' name. Then we get ready for Christmas or whatever. But would you come around this altar? Would you worship with me? Would you walk with me? Come on, let's trust him. Come on, begin to sing as you worship the Lord. All the miracles I've seen, you're too good. Can I coach you through something real quick? We're going to play that through again. No singing. 
But I want to invite you to worship the Lord. Some of you, that comes very easy to you. You're a worshiper by nature, maybe your gift, you encourage people, whatever. But I do think the Lord wants us to worship him in this season. Whether you're feeling good or not, it's not about feelings. We say, Lord, I just love you, I worship you. As the music plays, it'll play loud enough to drown your voice out. But maybe in your own way, you would just kind of do it like this. Lord, I love you, I worship you, I praise you. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for friendships, open doors, whatever. And you just thank the Lord for everything good in your life. Come on, you just begin to worship the Lord. Come on, lift up your voice. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We bless you. I thank you, God. I thank you for all the blessings in my life. I worship you. I praise you. I magnify you. Oh, Lord, I thank you for everything good. I thank you for the Spirit. I thank you for the Word. I thank you for the promise of eternal life. Oh, Lord, I bless you, Lord, tonight. I exalt you. I exalt you, Lord. Oh, we bless you. We magnify you. Oh, we pray. We praise you, Lord. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me he can do it. I've seen cancer disappear. We'll see metal plates and song. Don't you tell me he can do it. Don't you tell me he can do it. We'll see real life resurrection. We'll see mental health restored. Don't you tell times where Jesus is present but the person who's going through it's having a hard time Jesus said that there was four men that were carrying a man who was sick he's an invalid and they dropped him down through the roof and it said that the men's the, the men that brought him that their faith was high and they trusted the Lord I think when you come to a prayer meeting maybe your faith is low but other people's faith is high You're in the presence of God, but the presence of other people that are believing God with you. And if you've come here tonight and you need a miracle in your life, even if your faith and your feelings are low, other people may have faith to encourage you along the way. Not to embarrass you, but I do think we need to pray for each other. I do believe in the touch. The touch is important. But with COVID, we've been physically distanced. But if you want someone to pray for you, and this is what I mean by touch. So let's say my sister, she needs prayer. I can just put my hand on her shoulder and I could pray for her. I could kind of be physically distanced or whatever. But if you're in God's house and you want prayer, you want someone to pray for you, maybe put their hand on your shoulder, there's no reason anyone needs to carry the heaviness that you may be going through alone. 
You say, Pastor, I need a miracle in my life. I don't care who knows what's going on, but I need a miracle. We've come here tonight for miracles, to exercise faith, to believe God, that God can do immeasurably more than we could ever think or imagine. We're in the house tonight. This is the last thing we're gonna do, but we're gonna pray for miracles right now in Jesus' name. If you need a miracle, and you just slip up your hand. Someone will come around and just pray for you. You need a miracle. Let me just see your hand. Look, there's people all around you. Would you we, can we quickly go up to people right now and encourage them and pray for them? In Jesus' name, my brother over here, we need the Lord to do a miracle in our life. Someone over here needs a miracle. We're trusting God in our families. We're trusting God in our homes. We need God by His Spirit. Oh, Lord, we come running to you. Jesus, touch my brother and sister, I pray for miracles, encouragement, blessing, oh God. We need you, Lord. We need your touch. Jesus, I pray for miracles in this house. Lord, I pray for everybody online, Pastor George, the leadership at Valesburg, the congregation. I pray for encouragement for their hearts and their minds right now through the airwaves. Lord God, touch them, encourage them. You're the lifter of our heads. Lord, we walk by faith, not by what we see tonight, but what could be, Lord, by faith. We exercise faith in Christ because you said there'd be a greater day, a harvest, people around the altar. God, we just believe, Lord, by faith. We hold on to your word. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You'll meet all of our needs. There will be a great move of the harvest, Lord, at the end times. You will build your church. You're coming back. We don't need to fear, but put our faith in Christ. Oh, God, bless your people tonight. Jesus, Jesus. My friends, I've said to you three times this year, 2021, I don't know what's next, but there was a next. Valesburg. And then the Bible, we, we felt like the Lord told us just to wait on the Lord. The Lord will do it. And now we're building. Now we're almost Christmas time. I feel like there is a next, but we're just waiting on the Lord, walking by faith. The Lord will lead us. He'll take us to where we need to go. We're not going to be in this moment forever. We're walking by faith. But what's right before us, our next steps. Let me just give you two next steps and then we'll get you out of here. Number one, really quickly, invite Sunday. This Sunday with Reggie Dabbs, Young Adult Christmas Party, December, 18, uh, December 19th at 6 p.m. Listen, if you're 55 years old, you're not a young adult, all right? It's just, I don't know where your magic thing lies, in, but if you're, that's, you're not a young adult. There also is a photo booth out there with your new iPhone 27s or whatever. You can take phones or you take pictures out there all the month of December. Let me pray for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Blessings this night in Jesus' name. See you Sunday, 9 and 10, 45. Thanks for being with us tonight on United Prayer Service. We can't wait to see you this Sunday in person or online at 9 or 1045 in Marlton and then at 4 o'clock at Valesburg. Merry Christmas.